Today I'm going to show you how to cook with a Dutch oven, a modified steel bucket, and a wood gas stove. This is a Dutch oven. And I have a lid lifter inside, which is an essential piece of equipment when cooking with a Dutch oven. It makes handling the lid much easier and a trivet. Trivets are often useful when you're cooking roast because they keep the roast off the bottom of the Dutch oven and you can put some water in and then nothing burns. I store the Dutch oven in a plastic bag because there's a lot of soot on the bottom after the cooking process. You can have a look at the Dutch oven. It has some legs on the bottom. The Dutch oven is made out of cast iron. It's made out of thick cast iron which does a good job of transferring heat and spreading out the heat evenly. I put the trivet inside the Dutch oven and now I'm going to put some water into the Dutch oven. This water is just used for this demonstration. The water just barely covers the trivet and this is what you would do if you are cooking a roast so it stops the roast from burning because the water equalizes the heat and it keeps the roast off the bottom of the Dutch oven. This is how I pick up the Dutch oven and it stabilizes the Dutch oven. Now I'm going to wear some safety glasses. I always do this when I work with stoves and I put the wood gas stove inside the bucket. Now I put some screwdrivers through. These are long shank screwdrivers. The next thing I do is adjust the height of the stove. It should be about the top of the stove should be about a thumb's breadth or a finger's breadth from the screwdriver. So there's a little gap between the top of the stove and the screwdriver so the flame has somewhere to exit. When the stove is burning, now you put the cast iron Dutch oven on top of the screwdrivers and you have to adjust it a little bit. Now you can see that there's some water and a trivet inside the Dutch oven. And there's, I adjust it a little bit, take the lid off, put it back on, make sure everything is seated nicely, and you can have a look now and see what I'm doing. I sometimes put the wood gas stove a little bit deeper into the gravel. I shake it around and move, it, move the bottom a little bit deeper into the gravel to adjust the height of the wood gas stove so it is the correct height between the screwdriver and the top of the wood gas stove. Approximately a finger's breadth or a thumb's breadth. You put enough stones in the bottom of the bucket to raise the wood gas stove to the correct height. Now I sort of move the wood gas stove around, adjust it a little bit, move it back and forth and sink it a little deeper into the gravel. I can move the gravel around a little bit with my hands just to get the right adjustment. It's not too hard to do this. You just have to be patient. And I check the screwdrivers to make sure that everything is in place. And it's working. You can see the screwdrivers are on a slight angle. They're not parallel, almost like a triangle or an A-shape. Very slight angle. And there's, there's a gap between the bucket and the screwdriver handle so that if the rod gets hot, it doesn't melt the handle of the screwdriver. Now I put the Dutch oven on top and there's a little gap between the bucket and the side of the Dutch oven. So the exhaust can come out. Inside is the trivet with the water. This setup appears to be working quite well. Now I take the Dutch oven off and it's time to 
fuel the wood gas stove. I'm going to use some wood pellets and I reach into the plastic bag which I have ready and I take a can which is about the same volume as I need to fuel the wood gas stove. So with one can full I can fuel the stove. This is very quick and very convenient. Now I put the lid back on top and I take some petroleum jelly coated cotton balls, usually two, and I rip them open to make a spark net so the dry inside of the cotton ball is exposed and I put the cotton ball on the side of the wood gas stove, like this. So it, the spark net is now ready to absorb the sparks from the ferro rod. You need the inside, the dry inside fibers of the cotton ball exposed. So let the ferro rod spark can light them. These are the tools I have, long reach pliers, ferro rod, and striker. I'm going to make some sparks, use a ferro rod to drop some sparks onto the ripped open petroleum jelly coated cotton balls, which I call a spark net. And I drop the sparks onto the spark net and the cotton ball is now lit. I take the long reach pliers and drop the cotton balls onto the wood pellets. And within about four minutes, these wood pellets will be burning. That was very simple to do. It worked really well. Now you can see that the wood pellets are burning First there's a little flame and then eventually once they catch on fire or lots of them catch on fire you'll get a big flame coming out the top of the wood gas stove. Now I'm going to use a charcoal chimney and I'm going to put it on top of a wood gas stove. This will light the briquettes inside and it will get them glowing nicely. I will put the briquettes on top of the Dutch oven to provide heat from the top as well. It takes a couple minutes to get the briquettes lit. But this is a really simple technique which you can use to light briquettes or even lump charcoal. Here's the bucket and the flame is burning nicely. When you see those lines you know the stove is producing gas. The gas is burning and as you can see there's very little smoke. I'm going to put the Dutch oven on top of the screwdrivers and I'm using welding gloves and a lid lifter in order to do this. The lid lifter keeps the Dutch oven stable when I'm moving it. I'm adjusting the Dutch oven a little bit just to make sure that there's an air gap between the side of the Dutch oven and the edge of the bucket. You need this air gap so that the exhaust from the stove underneath can get out. I'm going to adjust the screwdrivers and this arrangement is now ready. The screwdrivers have to be the right height from the top of the bucket in order for this to work. So you can see there's a little bit of an air gap there between the edge of the Dutch oven and the edge of the bucket. That's where the exhaust comes out and it goes right around the Dutch oven. That is really good. There's a gap between the edge of the bucket and the handle of the screwdriver so that if the screwdriver gets hot it doesn't melt the screwdriver handle which is often made of plastic. So you can see I'm doing a 360 here and you can have a look at the arrangement. You can't see any visible smoke and no visible flame, but inside there is a burning wood gas stove which is heating up the Dutch oven. The Dutch oven is really just resting on the two screwdrivers which are poked through the bucket. I drilled holes in the bucket and then I poked the screwdrivers through the holes. It's very simple to do this. 
This is a do-it-yourself arrangement. It's really easy to get a steel bucket and it's pretty easy to drill holes through a steel bucket and it's also easy to find some sort of a steel rod or a screwdriver or rebar or whatever you happen to have to rest the Dutch oven on top of. So you can see there's a little bit of steam coming out of the edge of the Dutch oven. Just a little bit. And it's warming up. I could cook a roast like this. And it's nice and convenient. There are the holes. There's some drainage holes right at the bottom of the bucket. So if you spill something in there, or you get rain in there, the water just drains through the gravel and out those holes. And then there's some ventilation holes. And then there's the holes for these screwdrivers. So there's really three sets of holes in the bucket. This is what the arrangement looks like from the top. The screwdriver handles are sticking out a fair distance from the bucket to keep them away from the heat source so that the heat does not melt the plastic. There's a fair distance between the edge of the bucket and the plastic handle for this reason. You can see the screwdriver ends are also sticking out a little ways, maybe an inch or two, just enough so that if you bump the screwdriver, the Dutch oven doesn't fall down into the bucket. The screwdriver end is sticking a little ways out of the bucket. You can see there's an air gap between the edge of the bucket and the edge of the Dutch oven. This goes all around the bucket. If the Dutch oven and the bucket touch on one side, that's also okay. But you ideally there's an air gap going right around the bucket. Now let's have a look and see how the briquettes are doing in the charcoal chimney, which is on top of another wood gas stove. They are glowing nicely. These briquettes are ready for use. Now I'm going to take the lid lifter and lift the lid off of the Dutch oven. There's a lot of steam in there and it looks like the water is boiling nicely. There's lots of steam. This would be enough heat to cook a roast. There's the Dutch oven again. You can see the steam is coming out the side of the Dutch oven. This means the water inside is boiling and it's quite hot inside and it's probably about the right temperature for cooking. You can see it's windy. This steam is being blown all over the place but the Dutch oven is still hot and the flame inside is still working nicely. The water is definitely boiling. The bucket acts as a windscreen and it also acts as a stand for the Dutch oven and it also hides the flame. Here are some coals. They're glowing nicely and I'm going to use some barbecue tongs and take them out of the charcoal chimney and put the glowing coals on top of the Dutch oven. Just like that. I put them on top of the Dutch oven and this will provide heat on top of the Dutch oven. If you want you can rotate the lid a little bit periodically if it's windy outside to equalize the heat. Or you can rotate the whole bucket a little bit. 
every once in a while. Now I arrange the briquettes on top of the Dutch oven and they will provide heat from the top. So I have heat from the bottom which is the wood gas stove and I have briquette heat from the top. This works almost like an oven in your kitchen. You can see I'm getting a lot of heat here. These are barbecue tongs and they're, they work really well for picking up briquettes. That's working really well. These briquettes are white, which means they've been burning for a while. You can put less briquettes on and then you have less heat. Over time, the briquettes lose their heat as they become used up or burned up. The stones in the bottom of the bucket provide a heat shield between the heat of the stove and the bottom of the bucket and this stops the boards underneath the bucket from burning. This is important. So long as you don't have briquettes on top, this arrangement will probably work in moderately rainy conditions because the flame of the stove is shielded by the Dutch oven. The wind is blowing and as you can see there is not much of a gap for the wind to get down and blow out the flame of the wood gas stove. And if it were raining there's also not much room for rain to get down and extinguish the flame. After a while the briquettes get used up and burned up and if you want to keep cooking with top heat you need to add some new briquettes. You can see here the wind is blowing and the stove is working just fine. The steam is being blown all over the place. But the flame underneath is shielded from the wind by the bucket. Sometimes it's necessary to check and see how your cooking is doing inside the Dutch oven. So you can take the briquettes off and put them in a steel bucket, or in this case, I just put them back into the charcoal chimney. A steel bucket would also work really well for this purpose. And you take them off using the barbecue tongs and then there's a bunch of ash on top of the lid. Now I take a homemade pocket bellows and I just blow the ash off of the top of the Dutch oven. So now when I use the lid lifter and lift the lid off, the ash doesn't get into the food. This works well. The lid lifter is very important because it allows you to handle the hot cast iron Dutch oven lid quite easily. I like to wear leather welding gloves because they protect my hands in case I accidentally touch hot metal. Sometimes it's necessary to put some more water into the Dutch oven because water evaporates and you need to keep some water in the bottom of the Dutch oven if you're cooking a roast. I like to fill up the water until it just covers the steel trivet at the bottom of the Dutch oven. The water equalizes the heat and provides steam and basically stops the roast from burning. Now I put the lid back onto the Dutch oven using the lid lifter. If you cook a roast this way, it's very easy to do. It's hard to mess it up. Now it's time to put some 
briquettes back on top of the Dutch oven. I stand back far from the Dutch oven in case a briquette rolls off so it doesn't roll into my boot. These briquettes have burned for a while so they are smaller and they are giving off less heat. Soon I'll have to light another batch of briquettes and put them on top of the Dutch oven so I can cook for a longer period of time. I use the barbecue tongs to arrange the briquettes evenly on top of the Dutch oven lid. You can see the briquettes sometimes roll off and you don't want to have a briquette roll onto you. This is what it looks like when you're inserting the screwdriver through the two holes near the top of the bucket. The holes need to be the same size and drill the same height from the top of the bucket and they have to be the right height so that there is still an air gap between the side of the Dutch oven and the edge of the bucket. Here are the screwdrivers. They are put through the bucket and you can see they are sort of put on an angle. So they are not running parallel to each other. They are at running at a slight angle. You could probably also run them parallel if you want, but I found when they're run at a slight angle, it works better. It's almost like an A shape or like, like a triangle if you extend the line or the edge of the screwdriver further. You can see there's a long distance between the edge of the bucket and the screwdriver handle. This is to shield the plastic from the heat of the stove. The steel rods have to be at the same height so that your Dutch oven is level. If one set of holes is higher than the other, the Dutch oven will not be level. This is important. You can see there are four holes in the top of the bucket which allow the long screwdrivers or steel rods to be put through the bucket and form a rack. Let's have another look at the four holes for the two screwdrivers or metal rods. You can see they are at the same height. All of the holes are at the same height and they are the same size and the steel rod should be the same diameter. This keeps everything level. And you have to adjust the height of these holes to allow your Dutch oven to have a small gap between the edge of the Dutch oven and the side of the pail. That's how the screwdrivers are arranged. Now let's have a look at the ventilation holes. The ventilation holes should be a little above the air intake holes at the bottom of the wood gas stove so that if wind blows through the ventilation holes, it doesn't blow out the wood gas stove. Let's take another look at the screwdriver holes. And you can see they're all the same size. And I sprayed a little bit of high temperature spray paint on the inside of the bucket. And the whole outside of the bucket is sprayed with high temperature spray paint to make the bucket look nice and black. That's what the bucket looks like from the top without the screwdrivers in it. And you can see the ventilation holes need to be a little bit above the air intake holes at the bottom of the wood gas stove, but the ventilation holes in the bucket need to be near the bottom of the bucket so that you get a draft going upwards. So they supply oxygen to the stove. That's their purpose and they're they have to supply enough oxygen or air so that the stove can burn well. The, this is the gravel. I prefer round gravel, but you can use other types of gravel. It's better if the gravel is smaller. And I have about an inch of gravel in the bottom of the bucket to form a heat shield. Underneath the gravel are the drainage holes. They're quite small. They're so that if you get rain into the bucket or if you spill some of your cooking liquids into the bucket that it does not interfere with the operation of the stove and it just drains out of the bucket. So, so the 
gravel provides a heat shield and it also provides some stability for the stove and the vent and the drainage holes keep the bucket dry so that the liquids don't interfere with the operation of the stove. The gravel also raises the stove to the right level. You can see the drainage holes are drilled near the bottom of the bucket and they go right around the bucket and these are the ventilation holes. They're a little bit higher but they have to be near the bottom of the bucket so that you get a draft going upwards as hot air rises and of course oxygen fuels the flame of the wood gas stove and then the exhaust goes out the top of the bucket. That's what you want. You want a draft to form. And there you can see the four holes for the screwdrivers near the top of the bucket. It's really a very simple arrangement. It doesn't take a lot to modify a bucket like this. It's really easy to do. It's very simple. The holes for the bucket are level and they are placed at the right height so the Dutch oven fits onto the screwdrivers and there's still a small gap between the Dutch oven and the edge of the bucket. This is the gravel in the bottom of the bucket. The gravel should be small. My gravel that I'm using is round but it doesn't have to be round. And the purpose of the gravel is to form a heat shield to stop the bottom of the bucket from getting so hot that it burns any wood that you place the bucket on top of and the gravel will also provide drainage and raise the stove to the right level so that there's a thumbs distance between the screwdriver and the top of the stove. Now I clean off the soot covered screwdriver by rubbing it in the snow. This is easy to do. This is another look at the bucket. The screwdriver holes are near the top of the bucket. The ventilation holes are near the bottom of the bucket above the gravel and they are there to provide oxygen to the stove and the holes need to be above the gravel and underneath the gravel are the drainage holes which are much smaller. Here's a look from the side. You can see the drainage holes are at the bottom, the ventilation holes are in the middle running around the entire bucket and the screwdriver holes are in the top. The ventilation holes should also be just a little higher than the air intake holes of the stove, but they have to be near the bottom of the bucket so that you get a good draft. And there also has to be a gap between the Dutch oven and the side of the bucket so that the exhaust can come out the top, but the hot exhaust will also warm the Dutch oven. This is how I level the gravel. I just shake it a little bit. You can also pour the gravel out and get rid of the ash and then put the gravel back into the bucket. Another way is just to take the handle of the bucket and shake it from side to side. This will level the gravel inside and there's about one inch of gravel in the bottom of the bucket to form a heat shield. I like to wear leather welding gloves when I'm working with this stove because it protects my hands from accidental contact with hot metal and reduces the risk of getting a burn. Here's another arrangement that you can use. You can put a cast iron pan on top of the screwdrivers instead of a Dutch oven. I use an aluminum pie plate as a lid for the cast iron pan which increases efficiency and the advantage of this arrangement is that the cast iron pan is not resting on top of the stove so you can be a little bit less careful when you're putting the pan on top of the flame. There's no direct contact between the pan and the stove so you can't accidentally knock over the stove if you're moving a little quickly. The pan is resting on top of the screwdrivers so this stops the stove from tipping but then of course you need to have two screwdrivers or two rods to make this arrangement work. The bucket is painted with high temperature spray paint. I use some leather welding gloves when I'm picking up the pan to protect my hands from accidental burn. You can see this flame has streaks in it which means the stove is gasifying which means that the stove is burning its own smoke 
and it's a very clean burn. Now I rest the pan back on top of the screwdrivers and there's no contact between the pan and the top of the stove. This is really easy and it makes this arrangement more stable and it uses the pail as a rack which supports the cast iron pan. What you can also do if your flame is burning down in one bucket, you can already have another bucket lit and ready to go once you see that the flame in the first bucket is starting to die down. You can use two buckets to make the cooking process even more efficient. This way you always have flame to cook with. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to take my leather welding gloves and I'm going to pick up the cast iron pan and you can see the stove underneath has burned out. There's no more flame which means it's not cooking hot. It's just cooking at a low temperature. If you don't have a second set of screwdrivers just move the screwdrivers or metal rods from one bucket to the next bucket. The pan is resting on some bricks in this case. Now I'm moving the second screwdriver from one bucket to the next and I'm inserting it into the bucket. This cooking arrangement also works in moderate rain because the pan shields the fl flame from the rain and the rain drains out the bottom of the bucket through the drainage holes. Now it's time to pick up the pan and place it on top of the second bucket where the flame is burning brightly. You can also cut a small twig feeding hole at the same height as the top side fueling gap in the wood gas stove to allow you to use long reach pliers and feed twigs in through the side of the stove. This means you don't have to take the pan off the stove every time you refuel. Of course, you can also just take the pan off and then refuel the stove from the top. Thanks for watching and have a great day.